Zacchaeus was a blind man, and we'll soon read the, uh, about him. But I'll start by a little parable, which is not in the Bible. And this is the parable of the pencil. And uh, a pencil uh, maker uh, took the pencil aside just before he put the pencil inside the box. And the pencil maker looked at the pencil and he said, there are five things you need to know. And this was such a perfect pencil. And he said, number one, you'll be able to do many great things, but only if you allow yourself to be held in someone's hand. The pencil just that doesn't have eyes, but just stared at the pencil maker. The pencil maker said, two, you will experience a painful sharpening from time to time, but you'll need to become a better pencil. Third thing, I'll be able to correct the mistakes you might make. And number four, the most important part of you will be always what's inside. And number five, dear pencil, on every surface you are used on, you must leave your mark. No matter what the condition, you must continue to write. So, of course, this is just the pencil maker talking to the pencil. And the pencil understood and promised to remember and went into the box and he had this purpose in his heart. Now, remember this pencil is just like you and me. And I'm going to tell you how. And the first thing, it's uh, number one, you, you will be able to do many great things if you allow yourself to be in God's hand. And allow other human beings to access you and the many gifts you possess. You need to be in God's hands. Number two, you'll experience a painful sharpening from time to time. By going through problems, but you need it to become a, a better person. And number three, God will be able to forgive and to erase some of the mistakes you make. Number four, the, number four, where is it? The most important part of you will always be what's inside. Yes. Don't ever forget that. Yes. And number five, on every surface you walk through, you must leave your mark. No matter the situation, you must continue to perform to do your duties. So, what about the pencil and what a pencil can be in the hand of an artist? <laughs> and so, uh, if you're in God's hands, God can do great things through you. Doesn't matter your condition and yours or your situation. And today I'd like to mention the story of Bartimaeus. And Bartimaeus was a blind man. And in Mark chapter 10, I'm going to read from here. I know people are getting lazy. Uh, by not bringing the Bible to church. <laughs> so we always encourage you, get a, one of those smartphones with the Bible. You know, so some of them are awesome. Uh, Fred, can you just lift yours? We want to see. Look at that. Wow, that's good for my eyes. <laughs> it will really encourage you, you know, to get these nice Bibles. You can have hundreds of Bibles like I, I always carry with me hundreds of Bibles. And some people are texting, and I'm reading the Bible. And that's great. All right, so, but let's read from, uh, from the, um, the projector at the back. It says, and they came to Jericho, and he was leaving Jericho with his disciples and the great crowd. But Emmaus, a blind beggar, the son of Timaeus, was sitting by the roadside. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And many rebuked him, telling him to be silent. But he cried out all the more, son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stopped and said, call him. And they called the blind man, saying to him, take heart, get up, he's calling you. And throwing off his uh, cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. And Jesus said to him, What do you want me to do for you? And the blind man said, Rabbi, let me recover my sight. So here we see Jesus passing through the city of Jericho. 
And uh, finally, Jesus said to him, Go your way, your faith has made you well. And immediately, he recovered his sight and followed him on the way. Now, I'd like to start by telling you, if you want God to bless, to touch your life, to change the circumstances of your life, if you need a miracle from God, and we all need from time to time, time, to time you need to have the same attitude of Bartimaeus. And Bartimaeus, he cried out to God. And the first thing I need to tell you, I want to tell you, is if you want to receive something from God, be bold. Be bold. You know, there was people that uh, were trying to silence him. But uh, he did something and he started, he began to cry, uh, crying out loud. Sometimes people misuse this expression for crying out loud. <laughs> But I'm going to use it in the right context today. Okay? He was blessed for crying out loud. Yes. <laughs> That's the right context yes. of the expression. And, uh, uh, and, and he allowed Jesus to touch him also. He took matters into his own hands. And he did something that was not only uh, a, a bold statement. He was calling Jesus son of David. But he did something dramatic. As he, as he was yelling and saying, Jesus, Son of Man, have mercy on me! And everybody said, shh, be quiet, be quiet, be quiet. The Master is here. Uh, you, you're so noisy. But listen, if you're going to break loose of your problems, you need to do something bold and dramatic. Some people think, well, uh, if I think about the things of God, you know, God may, might bless me. But, you know, many times, you know, I'm preaching in different churches, not only the churches that I pastor, but other churches, and I know that God wants to do a miracle. And at the end of the service, we do an altar call, and I'm feeling, I know, God wants to heal people. And some stay in their seats and never come forward to receive prayer. Why? Because they think, well, God is everywhere, God is uh, there at the front, and God is here too, so if God wants to heal me, you know, He will heal me. And they're not doing a move to God, they're not doing anything bold, they're not leaving their comfort zone. Bartimaeus not only left the comfort zone, but he, he had to do something really dramatic. and. Uh, uh, he had his cloak, and the, the, the Bible says that he just threw the cloak and went to Jesus. And uh, as he did this, the Lord just touched him, and something happened. And you know, the, the cloak represents uh, who he was, because it was a beggar's cloak. And you know, the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1, Let us lay aside every weight, every sin that is easily entangles us. As we move to God, we need to lay aside uh, every barrier, every burden, every sin, whatever is keeping us from a transformation. You know, the beggar's cloak was the uniform of the beggar. So they will know this is a beggar by the way he was dressed. It's like when you go downtown Montreal or some cities in the world, you know, some people, they, they don't need to dress, in, you know, with the old clothes because there's Salvation Army and there's uh, Village de Valade and all these things, these places. But they will, if they, they're going to ask for money, they'll put, you know, their uniform, really, really old rags and clothes. And, uh, it, it, you know, I, I've lived in, in a place where people even rented babies to, to beg in the street. <laughs> You know, the gypsy ladies will rent a baby and they will take a baby, a rented baby, <laughs> you know, to beg in the street so people will give them uh, some more money. And, and uh, in those days, the beggar's cloak represented <clears throat> the way they could survive. It was their uniform. It's the way you, you knew that's a beggar. Like, uh, you know, when we uh, were yesterday at the powwow, we know who's participating in the dances by the way they're dressed. We know who's a policeman, a police officer, by their uniform. And we knew he was a beggar because of his cloak. 
But when Jesus called him, he knew he had to get rid of that cloak. He didn't want to come to, to the Lord with the cloak of the beggar because he was doing a change. He was operating a change in his life. And you know what? We can carry also our cloak, not of the beggar, but our own burdens. And some people, you know, carry these burdens. You know, I'm a, I've been rejected all my life. Some people, uh, you know, when, I know women that went to two, three, four divorces. So they think all men are criminals. <laughs> all men are terrible. And, and they have this cloak. They have this burden. And, and so uh, it, uh, it gets to a point in their lives. They don't want to be uh, close to, to any man. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, when I'm uh, willing to come to the Lord, I need to lay aside all my burdens. Some others, they, they think, well, I, I really wanted a miracle. I want God to touch me. I really want God to, to do something in my life. But they're carrying their cloak, the cloak of religion. And they think, well, God cannot uh, do this in my life. And they have all kinds of thoughts and prejudice and ways of doing things. You know, and sometimes it's amazing. I, 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 I was just commenting as I was uh, driving uh, to the church. Like yesterday we had a lady that came to our booth and she said, oh, I, I'm a pastor. I, I pastor an Anglican church and, uh, and I'm planting some churches. And oh, yeah, and I want to ask you something. Do you think it's a good idea if I use a debit card? I said, what do you mean a good idea uh, to use a debit card? You know what? She was uh, against using bank cards, but she had one in her wallet. <laughs> you know, and some people are just like this. I lived in Mennonite country, with the, the, close to the Amish. And the Amish are against banking. But guess what? They received Visa, MasterCards, and debit card when they were selling their products. But then they will say, this is of the devil. You know, and some people have this kind of reasoning you know, because they accept certain things that we have in this world don't belong to God, so they must be of the devil. That's a cloak. Not everything that is not from God belongs to the devil. In fact, all things belong to God. The devil took what is, un it's not rightful, and he has it in his hands. And we just need to possess the good things that God has prepared for us. But sometimes we have this cloak, the cloak of prejudice. The cloak of unbelief. You know, it, it, it's like those people that say, Oh, th is this the Bible that they were grabbing yesterday, the New Testament? But you know what? I'm a Roman Catholic. And, and they will say, Yeah, but the Roman Catholics also believe in the Bible. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, so get it, take it home. Okay, all right. And, and you know, and, but some people have this cloak of prejudice of all these things. And guess what? You and me, at times, we carry the beggar's cloak. Because we think that, you know, we, we, we're conformed to, this, to, to our situation. We think, well, I have this disease, so I have to live with this disease. I, went, I, I pray, you know, I, I mean, I, I had people telling me, oh, you know, you can pray for me, but Benny, he prayed for me, and Reinhard Bonke prayed for me, and nothing happened. <laughs> You say, and I say, guess what? It's not Benny Hinn or Reinhard Bonk, it's Jesus. It's Jesus. And, and, and uh, you know, it's good that you had some people like, you know, famous people and people that God uses pray for you. Nothing happened. But guess what? It can happen now. So I'm telling you, it doesn't matter what is the trouble, what is the problem, what is the situation. You need to get rid of the beggar's cloak. And, and something else also. You know, Bartimaeus was the son of Timaeus. In fact, the, the, the prefix bar is in, in Hebrew doesn't mean a, a bar joint, you know. <laughs> bar means son of. So uh, for the side it was Simon Bar Jonas meaning he was the son of Jonas. So Bar in, 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 in the Hebrew language means son of. So he was Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus. And, uh, and you know, 
to me is, it's very interesting to, to see that it means highly prized or of a great, of great value. So it seems to me that he was the son of a very important man. He wasn't just a beggar there. He was Bartimaeus. He was the son of Timaeus. And Timaeus means a person of great value. And uh, at the time, they used to give names according many times to what people were. And I'm telling you this uh, uh, just to, to mention that sometimes we can bring from our past certain things that may blind us to the truth. And um, everything in the Bible uh, is written for a reason. And sometimes our heritage can be a hindrance in order to accept the new things that God wants to do in our lives. It, it, it's those, like those people that I mentioned that, that say, Oh, you know, it, it's great what you're saying about Jesus, but I'm a, I'm a Catholic. I, I was born Hindu. I'm a Muslim. Uh, I'm Jew by birth. And, and so people, when we talk about the things of God, they will bring their values. Yeah. Or they will say, you know, uh, I, I'm hearing you, but, you know, I go to the longhouse. And, uh, and I, I believe, you know, that, yes, there's a creator. And I believe in the creator. But I believe according to that system. But I have news for you. God reveals himself in many ways. And people can find the way to Jesus through many ways, yes. not the way to God. The way to God is one, and His name is Jesus. Amen. He's the only way. He said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. But some people find the way to Jesus through different religions. There's even Muslims that are finding their way to Jesus. It's not through their religion, but their religion introduced them to Jesus and they say, oh, here's this prophet. And then they find out, they find out later that he wasn't just a prophet. But they will find out that he's the son of God. Yes. He's, here's Bartimaeus. And he's crying loud. Jesus, son of David. Son of David. So this is a, a very uh, Jewish and a very religious kind of statement. Because when he's calling Jesus Son of David, he's implying that he's the Messiah. He's implying that he is the Son of David. And we know he is the Son of Timaeus. So he's giving really importance, a great importance to the family of Jesus. Now, when we come from a family, we carry our values. I was raised Roman Catholic, half, 50% Roman Catholic, 50% atheist. So, so I was raised like this. Now, some of you were raised Pentecostal. Others were raised nothing. But you carry some values. And you have some ideas. And we can be like Bartimaeus who was physically blind, but we can have also something that is called spiritual blindness. And spiritual blindness is when we're so attached to the values of our family, our heritage, our past, that we're not able to recognize when Jesus is present. And let me tell you, Jesus is here today. Amen. Jesus is in the house. And the Lord is here. And he, he, He's looking at you. And He's expecting you to get rid of the cloak. To get rid of your blindness. And to acknowledge, to recognize that Jesus Christ is not only Son of David, but He's the Son of God. And He really knows everything about you. He knows your past. And you may give all that kind of excuses and say, Oh, I was raised, raised Anglican or United Church or this or that. So I cannot go to this church. I cannot go to this place. Listen, God loves you so much that He's willing to adopt you into His own family. So you'll never have to say, My father is a Roman Catholic. My father is, a, is Protestant. My father 
is, uh, you know, Muslim. But you can say, my father is God. And that's a great difference because our heritage changes completely. Remember, you need to be like the pencil in God's hand. And Jesus is asking today the same question he did to Bartimaeus. When Bartimaeus arrived and he was right there in front of Jesus, Jesus asked him, uh, the man, what do you want me to do for you? Wow. <coughs> When I was a kid, I loved, you know, fairy tales and all those stories. And I used to imagine if, uh, uh, you know, if I, if I would find Aladdin's uh, lamp and the genie will come out of the bottle, you know, I would like to imagine what, what three wishes, what are my main wishes, what do I really want from the genie? You know, there's no genie, <coughs> but here's one bigger than any genie. <laughs> He's the creator of the, the universe. And Bartimaeus is confronted face to face with him. And it's obvious. You have a blind man in front of you. You can do anything. Do you really have to ask what you want me to do for you? Well, we, may, we might think maybe not. But Jesus asked. Because he wants it, he wants it to come out of your lips. He wants to know. <laughs> I'll never forget as a young pastor, and, the, and I was traveling, and once I went to Toronto about 17 years ago, and I was preaching in this church. There was a, a great move of God, a, re, a revival, and people were getting saved and healed. And, and, you know, and so I was praying for people, and the Lord was healing people, and there's this man at the front, and, uh, and I noticed he, he had a leap, and, uh, and he had uh, 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 obviously a problem. And I told him, I'm going to pray for your healing. And this man was scared. He said, no, 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 no. Don't pray for my healing. I was so shocked. He said, what do you mean? I will lose my compensation. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, I wasn't aware what compensation was when I, when I came, because I, I was coming from Europe. I will lose my compensation. And I don't even remember what you want me to pray for. I think it was money or something. And I was so mad. Yeah. I said, no way, I'm not praying for you. He was upset, he was really upset. But uh, I, I just, I was so angry, you know. What, <laughs> you don't want to be healed? <laughs> so, here's Jesus and Bartimaeus. And Bartimaeus could have said, no, no, don't heal me. I don't want to lose my compensation, you know. I, I just want a, 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 you know, a, a, a million talents or whatever money they had. <laughs> but Bartimaeus came to Jesus with the right heart. Jesus had this question because he wanted him to pronounce something. And I'm going to, to come to the end of the message. And let me tell you, the Bible says in the Old Testament, whoever, everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. And the word saved, it's not just be saved from going to hell. It's be made whole. And I really like this passage because it talks about calling upon. And I want to I wanna give you an example of what it means to call upon. Okay? Have you ever went to a hospital or to the doctor and you're in the waiting room and you wait there for hours <laughs> and you're just waiting and waiting and waiting and you, you have to see the doctor, and here you are, if it's, if it's at the hospital in Longale, you can spend good five to seven hours before you see a doctor. And they call this person, and they call that person. Let me give you an example of what it means to call on. And, you know, if you're in this situation at the hospital, and the doctor or a nurse comes and calls you and says, Lucy, Lucy Shrina, what are you going to do? You go, of course. And then you get to the doctor, and the doctor looks at you and says, Oh, here you are, Lucy. So I wish you the best. You know, there's the, you know, that counter over there. Go there and pay for the consultation. Bye-bye. Is that what happens? No. 
when the, the, the doctor calls upon you, it's obviously because he wants to listen to the patient's concerns, and after he assess the situation, he will give further instructions, and he will say, this is what you have to do. Listen, in this situation, Bartimaeus was calling upon Jesus, and Jesus called upon him. Jesus, the doctor, said, Bartimaeus, come here. And when the Bible says, call on God or call upon the Lord, it's not a matter of, you know, let's do a prayer and say, hi God, here I am. <laughs> and we do, you, you know, we have the way of approaching the Lord. So we've learned, we go in Jesus' name. So here I am in Jesus' name. Okay. Second thing, call God Father. Okay. Father, here I am in Jesus' name. And bless me. Bye-bye. And you hand the phone. <laughs> Listen, when you call upon God, it's not just to say hello. It's just not just to say, you know, God bless me. But when you call upon the Lord, there's something, there's a catch. And here's the catch. On the day of Pentecost, now I want to show you this. Please try to understand this. Peter preached that Bible verse in Job. That was his message. Today, I'm talking about Bartimaeus. This was the first message of the church in Acts chapter 2. And he was telling all those people, whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And he continued preaching about calling upon the name of the Lord. But the people in the crowd, they didn't understand what he was saying. And I'm going to show you why. It's because... After he preached, they asked the question, So, what shall we do? And Peter could have said, Well, I already told you. Just call upon the name of the Lord. You know, dial, you know, Acts 2.37. Whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. But there was something more, and Peter answered the question, not, not telling, I already told you what to do, but he told them very clearly, this is on verse 38, Repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for remission of sins. So it's not just a matter of saying, Lord! No, there's an action. And the action that Peter explained is you need to repent and be baptized. So you need to follow Jesus. You need to follow the Lord. Baptism represents death to self and a new birth. So, this concept of calling upon the name of the Lord, it's not just a matter of doing a prayer, using the right words, using the right formula. You know, uh, it's not just saying, Father, in Jesus' name, here I am, hallelujah, bless me. No. God will question you when you're really calling upon the name of the Lord even if you come with a sickness even if, we, if you come in a, in a sick, desperate situation and some of you may, might be in a desperate situation I don't know what you're going through but God knows all things God knows all things and let me show you how this passage ended in verse 52 after this man was healed Jesus told this man, go your way. Your faith has made you well. And immediately he recovered his sight and followed him on the way. So Jesus told him, go your way. And Bartimaeus went Jesus' way. You see, God gives you the option. What do you want to receive? What can I do for you? But there's a catch. There's a catch. Because some people think, well, I just want to be healed so I can go, you know, to the poker, uh, poker bar, to the slots, and I can sit for four hours without having a pain in my, in my back. You know? <laughs> and that's 
that's fine, it's your desire, it's a valid desire that you want to receive your health for your own purposes. But here's the catch. Jesus heals, yes, he, he heals. Jesus wants to heal you today. Jesus wants to do a miracle today. But the catch is, when you call upon the name of the Lord, He will tell you, mm, let me put you to the test, Brent. Brent, go your way. And now, you're healed, you're whole, and you have a choice. You have your way, and Jesus' way, His way. And you make the call. And I believe Jesus knew already what was about to happen. No. The phone rings. That is today. Who's on the other end of the phone? God is calling. God is calling for you. You didn't come here just by accident. It's not just because you said, Oh, let's go to Ganwaki Church today. No, God wants you to listen to this message. Because it's not just a matter of calling upon the Lord or the Lord calling you. It's what are you going to do? With your healing. What are you going to do with your blessing? Jesus gave the choice to Bartimaeus. God's way or my own way. And yes, I like the song, you know, this is my way. You know, I, I, it's not sang by me, but by Frank Sinatra. It's really, it's a really good song. I did it my way. Oh yeah, I did it my way. This is my way. But Jesus, the Lord, wants to tell you, it's, it's your way, go your way. I, I, I'm even willing to bless you and heal you, and you can go your way. I don't know what will have happened to Bartimaeus. And you know, when someone's name is mentioned in the Bible, there's a purpose. One of the purposes was that, you know, that, that generation that was, uh, you know, passing this story, they had a way to check this is a genuine miracle. You want to know about it? There's a man, it's, it's in Jericho, his name is Bartimaeus, he's the son of Timaeus. Go there and check it out. Ask everyone. Everyone knows the beggar, the son of the wealthy man that became a beggar because he was blind. That's one of the purposes. Another reason why his name is mentioned in the Bible is because it's very important for us to know that even though this man had a heritage, he decided to do things God's way. And when he came to Jesus, I am sure when the Lord said, go your way, I'm sure the Lord knew, uh -uh, this one is going to follow me. This one is going to follow me. So here's the catch. When you call upon the name of the Lord, you need to expect that there is, I wouldn't call it the price you have to pay, but I will call it a decision you have to make. Because the price was paid at Calvary.